The unit circle. We began developing trigonometry with right triangles with a hypotenuse of 1. The side opposite a given angle equals sine theta and the adjacent side equals cosine theta. Since there are an infinite number of possible angles theta, there are an infinite number of right triangles with a hypotenuse of 1. Here are a few. We also learned in geometry that the distance between two points is equal to the hypotenuse of a right triangle constructed with the sides along the horizontal and vertical axes. That means that if, for each triangle, we locate theta at the origin and have cosine theta lie on the x-axis, the distance to the end of each hypotenuse will be 1 for every triangle. What shape is formed by an infinite number of points that are an equal distance from the origin? Discuss. Here's what the triangles look like when laid atop one another with angle theta at the origin and the side labeled cosine theta on the positive x-axis. This is the result in quadrant 1. Let's keep going. How should we fill in quadrant 2? So if we take those same triangles and flip them to the other side of the y-axis, we fill in quadrant 2. What about quadrant 3? If you take these points and reflect them across the x-axis and then draw those lines in, we have filled in quadrant 3. What about quadrant 4? Finally, we can reflect these points across the x-axis, we can reflect these points across the y-axis. Either way, we have our quadrant 4 triangles right here. This is showing the five triangles reoriented with theta at the origin cosine theta on the x-axis, and sine theta reaching up or down to the unit circle. Of course, there are an infinite number of possible triangles. Here are just five reflected around the unit circle. With the exception of the x and y intercepts, you can draw right triangles that fits the scheme in all four quadrants. In this presentation, the Greek letters alpha, beta, and theta will be used to identify angles with degree measure. In contrast, the letters T, U, and V will be used to identify arcs, or angles, in radians. In diagrams, angles will be labeled at the origin. Arcs will be labeled on the boundary of the unit circle. This convention is designed to help recognize and understand the subtle difference. The unit circle is the circle centered at the origin with a radius of one unit. Its equation is given by x squared plus y squared equals 1. For any point x, y on the unit circle, the first coordinate, x, equals cosine theta, and the second coordinate, y, equals sine theta, where theta is the standard angle in degrees whose initial side is the positive x-axis and terminal side includes the point x, y. Here we have the definition of the unit circle, but with t, which is measured in radians. For any point x, y on the unit circle, the first coordinate, x, equals cosine t, and the second coordinate, y, equals sine t, where t is the standard arc on the unit circle from 1, 0, terminating at x, y. So this arc right here. The tangent ratio, given by tan t, is the ratio of sine t to cosine t. So tan t equals sine t over cosine t. For any point x, y on the unit circle, the slope of the radius from 0, 0 to x comma y is given by m sub r equals tan t, where t is the measure of the arc on the unit circle from 1 comma 0 terminating at x comma y. And remember, t is measured in radians. The equation of the unit circle is given by x squared plus y squared equals 1. By definition, x equals cosine theta and y equals sine theta, so substitution produces a new equation. In terms of theta, the equation of the unit circle is cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. So here we have the unit circle, quadrant 1, we have cosine theta and sine theta. In quadrant 2, we have a negative cosine theta value and a positive sine theta value. Here we have negative values for cosine theta and sine theta. And here we have positive cosine theta values but negative sine theta values. Given any point x, y on the unit circle, a radius can be drawn creating the terminal side of an angle theta with the positive x-axis. Step 1. Pick any point x, y on the unit circle. So we've picked this point here. Step 2. Now draw a radius from x, y to the origin. Label the angle between the radius and the positive x-axis with theta. 
So we draw this purple line here and we label this angle theta. Step three, from the point x comma y, draw a vertical segment to the x-axis and label it sine theta. So that's this red line right here. Step four, from the point x comma zero right here, draw a horizontal segment to the origin and label it cosine theta. So that's the green segment right here. The indicated radius makes an angle of 60 degrees with the positive x-axis and has a terminal point all in the unit circle, right here. First, construct a right triangle and label legs with sine 60 and cosine 60. So if we drop the line right here, this is a right triangle. Cosine 60 is going to be this right there. And sine 60 will be this side right there. Then determine sine 60 degrees and cosine 60 degrees using a calculator if necessary and use these values to label the terminal point. Cosine 60 degrees is one half, so that makes this piece right here one half. Sine 60 degrees is the square root of three over two, so that's the length here. The decimal values of one half and the square root of three over two are 0.5 and 0.87. So those are the coordinates of this point. The standard arc T measures three pi over four radians and terminates at a point on the unit circle as shown. Find sine T and cosine T. First, construct a right triangle and label legs with sine of three pi over four and cosine three pi over four. So we just drop the line down right there. This uh, line right here is going to be sine three pi over four and this length right here is going to be cosine 3 pi over 4. Then determine sine of 3 pi over 4 and cosine 3 pi over 4 using a calculator if necessary, and use these values to label the terminal point. If you use a calculator, you'll see that the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative 0 0.707, and the sine of 3 pi over 4 is point, positive 0 0.707. So those are the coordinates of this point. You can also leave it in the radical form, which is the square root of 2 over 2, and the negative square root of 2 over 2, which is how you get those 0.707s. An arc T measures 7 pi over 6 radians and terminates at a point on the unit circle as shown. Find sine T and cosine T. Construct a right triangle and label legs with sine 7 pi over 6 and cosine 7 pi over 6. So we'll take this point, we'll draw a line up to the x-axis, and then we have that radius there. The sine of seven pi over six is going to be this value here, and that's already right there, so I'm not gonna write it again. And the adjacent side to the angle here is going to be cosine seven pi over six. Then determine what the sine of seven pi over six and cosine of seven pi over six are using a calculator if necessary, and use these values to label the terminal point. The cosine of seven pi over six is negative square root of three over two and the sine of seven pi over six is negative one half. If you use a calculator, put these into decimal form, that gives you coordinates of negative 0.866 comma negative 0.5.